like dead on in the spot. So you just got yourself a new DJI drone and you're wondering what's the best way to track somebody else? Should you be flying it? Should you be using active track? What should you do? Today we're gonna to take the Air 3 and we're going to show you how to use what I think is the most underrated feature in that drone for tracking. So join us in these beautiful locations as we go take the, uh, the skateboards and show you exactly how to do this. So a lot of the times if you're out filming someone else, you're using something like a GoPro and you're getting shots like this and you wanna get more shots that like, really show the environment and that's where a drone really comes in handy. Not that it's not cool to mix in GoPro footage, but it only goes so far. This is the perfect spot to do this video. What we're gonna do is set this up. I'm gonna screen record on the RC2. If you wanna know how that works, go check out this car. I just made a video on how to get your files off of it. We're gonna use spotlight mode. We're gonna manually fly it, and I'm gonna try active track because in all my experience with all my DJI drones, spotlight mode, people just sort of don't really get what it's for. And so I wanna show you what you can really do with that versus manually flying versus active track. So make sure you stay through this whole video because I'm gonna go through all that right now. So the first thing you want to do when you're doing spotlight mode is you're going to actually touch the screen and drag it over your subject matter. And just for an example, we're going to draw a box right over Jonathan's crotch. We won't do it unless we're in flight, so I'm going to go ahead and get this thing in the air and we'll uh, track him on a skateboard. So we're going to start out with it in the wide angle or the standard camera on the Air 3 and I think I'm going to try it with the optical as well so we can see how close we are to the drone and the subject matter from the drone and all that good stuff. He's getting a skateboard and we're going to go ahead and give this a go. I think you're going to be as pleasantly surprised as I am. So for this first clip, I'm going to actually manually try and follow him. And he's just going to ride down the path just a little bit, around the bend. And when he sees me stop with the drone, he's going to just turn around and come back. So we'll lower the drone first. Before you turn around and come back, Jonathan, I'm going to switch cameras. So when I stop, wait until like, maybe I'll do like a circle with the drone or go up and down. I'll do something that makes it obvious I'm ready again. So we're high enough that we shouldn't hit anybody. Let me check my obstacle avoidance settings. We are in brake mode. Let's put it in bypass mode. By flying it manually first, it's giving us a baseline, something to judge the other modes off of. You ready? So now I've changed it to the optical zoom. So I should be able to be a little higher, still manually flying it. And we're gonna see if we can follow them back and if it's easier with the optical. So when I'm doing this manually, I'm having to adjust the gimbal. I'm having to adjust the height. I'm having to make sure I don't go too far past him. What I'm viewing, and everything else and it's not as smooth as I wish it could be. It will definitely take a lot of practice doing this versus active track and as you're gonna see in spotlight mode as well. It is definitely easier to know that I'm keeping the drone higher than everything when it's in the uh, telephoto lens. All right, so we'll do it two more times. I just go to about where you just were. That's like the perfect amount of time. So for this next mode, we're gonna go ahead and use spotlight, which is again where I drag a box over him you can see at the bottom it says spotlight. You have the option of active track and you have uh, the other option of point of interest which it will spin around him. And then we'll try one more with active track and see which one really worked out the best. So as you notice, I'm not gonna have to adjust my gimbal at all. Really all I have to do is follow him. And I don't need to adjust my yaw. I can adjust my height if I want to. 
and no matter what I do, you notice like it's keeping him completely in the shot. And you still got to be careful of stuff. Like I just got to, you saw the uh, the ground there. And you don't want to like freak other people out, but uh, yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And we can come back in a little closer. Hopefully there's no people on the path. Get right behind them. Looks like nobody's there. So we are gonna turn around and show you this cool reveal of the lake. And it just keeps them right where we want them. It's perfect. Now, I don't even think I'm going to put it in the telephoto lens mode because what I really want is to just show some of that lake right there. It's such a beautiful view. And I'm going to try to see if we can get some of the lake to show. That's the hard part because it's like uphill. Hopefully nobody's coming that way. But yeah, it's doing its job. Like, it's a little hard because, like I said, I have that hill right there. But, yeah, tracking someone else's spotlight is definitely the way to go if you're wanting to get certain shots. We tried this snowboarding, and uh, the problem was that we were just running out of time. We had to hike, and I'm getting obstacle avoidance. I let my drone drop a little too low, which is messed up my shot, but that's my fault. For this last test, we're just going to throw it in active track. I'm going to actually start it in front of him. Active track, front, front, go, record. Okay, it's flying on its own, so it automatically went up. You can go whenever on its own, and as he starts, it backs up. And it's doing the shot all by itself, keeping him in. Because of the way that he rides that board and sort of is going back and forth, the drone is um, wanting to sort of zigzag. So we're going to put it on the left and see if it gets out of the way of people. And I think we should have gone to the right. Well, we'll see how it does. I feel like it's doing better on the side than in the front which is a pretty common thing for DJI drones. I think you can still go further away, so on the way back, we're gonna switch it to the other side. It's a great shot though. You can see all the active tracks picking up on the bushes and it's trying to not hit things. So we're gonna see if we can switch it. Huh. So it's uh, telling us he's going a little too fast. I've never seen that before, but. Let's see if we can get it to go to the right, at least. Whoa, okay. Whoa! Wait, 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 wait. It lost him. Active track, go. Go, go, active track, go. All right, so we picked him back up, and it's trying to catch up to him. I think he slowed down for us. We're going to put it... See if we can get it to get to the front of him by the time he gets back here. It cannot get back to the front of him, it says. But it is trying. It's, you know, if I push the control stick some, it looks like you can still manually control it side to side and all that. Bring it in closer and reposition where the drone is. And then the active track picks up, but then it goes behind him and then loses him again. So what I'm finding from these different modes is that if there's a specific shot you want don't rely on active track don't rely on manual if you're following someone use spotlight mode because it's just gorgeous there's a, you just can't get the same shots with automated or just completely manual but mixing the two shots in you can get things that you just can't get otherwise for example let's go out and look at these sailboats for a second all right so we're going to switch it into spotlight mode with the optical three times zoom. Well, it's not really, it's a telephoto lens. So we're gonna get a little closer. I didn't realize he was that far out. And then we'll do the same thing we did with my buddy and we'll see if we can draw the box around it. Like so, leave it in spotlight mode. And it just, it's supposed to keep it in frame. It's not doing it. I have the hardest time with boats and water. Like 
the Zoom never had a problem with this. And my two really didn't either, but so weird how it just will not hold on to boats. This is like now my second or third time I've tried to do this with boats and it just doesn't want to hold onto the damn boat. It's, it's tracking a spot in the water. Still a cool shot though. Now that we have finally gone through that footage, watched it, and really looked at it and seen how each mode worked, I'm gonna tell you, once again, if you're gonna track somebody else, spotlight mode is the way to go. Now the problem with using active track to track yourself is you do have to hold the controller or have it with you because if something happens and you need to reposition the drone and the controller's back over there where you started the active track, then that's an issue. Now, of course, you could always just fly everything manually and use your gimbal wheel and do everything all together, but why? It just doesn't make any sense to do that when DJI has put this spotlight mode in your drone. So use it, it's not cheating, it's what it's meant for. Take it, embellish it, do what you can with it and make awesome content and I'll see you in the next video. So I was just getting the boat shot like that but that's actually how far I am. That's crazy. That was crazy.